In the top level of the UI package, we have four small files which we will use to create and apply styles, colors, fonts, and so on. One of those files is the global theme for our application, and I will show you how to create both a light and dark theme for the app in only a few extra lines of code. Stay tuned for the end of this section as I will do a live demo of the different themes. Right click on the UI package and create a new Kotlin file, which is going to be called color.kt. This file will essentially be a replacement for colors.xml if you're used to working with the old resources system, which was based in XML. Let's create a color object. Make sure you import the compose color class. Okay, so before we proceed, the most important thing to understand here is how to read these particular values. So the first two characters here, 0x, this basically tells the compiler, which is the program that will be reading this code, that this is in fact a hexadecimal number. The second two digits here indicates the alpha value as a percentage. Alpha is another way of saying transparency or how opaque something is. The remaining three pairs are the red, blue, and green or RGB values, again in a hexadecimal percentage. And that's pretty much all there is to know about these different color values. I've copied and pasted over the rest of the values because there's absolutely no point in either of us typing all this out. But also keep in mind that they have some predefined values such as black, for example, which you can also make use of. Right click on the UI package and we're going to create another new Kotlin file. And this one's going to be called shape. So in the old view system, when you wanted to do something like creating a background with rounded corners or a button or widget or something like that, you had to create usually something inside of the drawable folder, which was XML based. Again, since this is composed, we can just go ahead and do that in Kotlin instead. And we'll just use some default parameters. Now, this might be your first time seeing the .dp extension. Let's just take a quick look at the source code. So as you can see, you can basically just append it to an integer double and various kinds of numbers. The important thing to understand here is that this basically tells the Compose framework that we want to use density independent pixels. If you want a more profound explanation of what exactly those are, I strongly suggest you look into it because it's a little bit complicated. Suffice it to say that the idea here is to allow the framework to create values for heights and widths and things like that, which work across a variety of different screen sizes and form factors. Right click on the UI package, and we're going to create another Kotlin file. This one's going to be called type. Now, in case you're wondering, when we say type, we're not really talking about a type system or anything to do with type theory. It has to do with typography or text and how this text is styled or presented. So again, this is very much the kind of thing that we used to do in styles.xml. Uh, we're basically going to create a bunch of different text styles which we'll use throughout the application. And then we'll kind of see how to wrap those up in a typography object. And then we'll see how to add that typography object to our sort of global composed theme. First, let's create a text style.
Sometimes we have a situation where we want to keep a bunch of default values, but we might want one or two values which are actually passed in as a parameter to create the textile object. So I'll show you another way to create these textiles using a function. Just going to do some quick copy paste here. And then we can override the color. So again, what I'm going to do for the rest of these text styles, now that we've seen everything there is to see here, is I'm going to copy and paste them over. But there is one more thing that's new that we need to create in this particular file. Okay, as you can see, we've got a couple different text styles here. So the last thing we need to do is create a typography object. So basically what that's going to mean is that we're going to assign some of the text styles that we've created below, which are used in common things like the body text of a particular feature of the application, buttons, titles, that kind of thing. If that doesn't make sense, let's just write the code. Make sure you select compose.material, not kotlin.text. Okay, we're just going to do two more. All right, and the only other thing we need to do is set up our Graph Sudoku theme. Right click on the UI package, and we've got, you guessed it, another Kotlin file, and it's going to be called Graph Sudoku Theme. So one of the handy little features of Jetpack Compose is that it is incredibly easy to create a theme for light and dark modes. As someone who uses, generally speaking, dark mode almost always, I actually really appreciate this particular feature of Compose. The first step in that process is to create two different color palettes. Let's start with the light color palette. So some of these properties should probably be familiar to most Android developers, like having a color primary. That's how we used to do it also in the old XML system with colors, or at least that was a common naming convention. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out here is that um, there's a degree to which some of these more obscure ones, like primary variant, surface on primary, and so forth, I'm really just using those because it's convenient. They don't necessarily have to mean anything in particular. But the important thing to understand here is that if there's any different color between a light theme and a dark theme, we do want to define it somewhere in here and then use it appropriate in the composables, which we'll be learning to do later on. Okay, that was actually supposed to be uppercase there by convention. And also notice that I've copy pasted over the dark color palette, because again, there's nothing new going on there. The next step, however, is very important. We're going to create our theme and it's actually gonna be really, really easy. Here's a little shortcut I learned from a friend. If you want to create a composable function really quickly, start typing comp and then hit enter. Just saves you a little bit of time. Now this theme is gonna have two parameters here. So 
So before we write the body of this function, I just wanted to discuss these two parameters. So as you can see, we're actually making a function call is system in dark theme. What's going to happen is this system call will return a Boolean, which will tell us whether the user has specified if the app is supposed to be in dark mode or light mode. And then the content represents everything that will be wrapped inside of this theme. What's important to understand here is that everything that we put inside of this composable, i.e. the content, will have access to all these different colors, styles, and typography information from within the theme itself. The actual utility of this will make a lot more sense when we actually write the composables. Just to finish things off, we're going to create a material theme composable. And we won't need the lambda expression. So there you have it. It only took a few minutes to create like the color resources and styles and typography information necessary to render both a dark color palette and a light color palette for different modes. What I'm going to do is show you a quick demo of what this actually looks like in an application. Here I'm going to be starting the application in the light theme. Then I'm going to navigate to the operating system's settings and set it to preferred dark mode. And upon returning, we see immediately that the application now is using the dark theme. We are now ready to start building our user interface.